seminar related with cryogenic piping system and, and LNG terminals. Why LNG? Why LNG is so demanded no, nowadays? The natural gas NG is considered an interesting and clean energy source, less contaminating than other hydrocarbons. But also there are huge quantities of reservoirs that have been identified and found. The problem is that they are located in remote areas and the transportation by gas pipelines is commonly expensive. Okay. Then the natural gas, the solution that was found many years ago is to be liquefied and transformed into LNG, reducing the volume 600 times and making the transoceanic transportation by carriers feasible and preferable uh, solution. Also, this uh, liquefied natural gas, the LNG, is less flammable, so it's safer than the natural gas, so it's a very good solution. The main function then of the LNG regasification plant is once we receive the LNG carrier, we unload it to the CPF, to the plant, and we vaporize again, we convert again into natural gas to be distributed to the customers, commonly by pipelines or trunk lines, but it could be also be distributed by truck lorries. Very, very brief introduction of the general process in an LNG terminal, just to be aware of the main equipments involved. The LNG carrier arrives to, to the offshore structure, that is called the, the jetty, and then the loading arm is connected to, to the carrier and unloads the liquid phase to the, to, the, to the plant, to the installation. Okay, Using the unloading pumps that are inside the LNG carrier, the pumps are inside the carrier. During the LNG unloading, the boil of gas that is generated, part of this LNG is returned to the carrier to balance the pressure. The rest of the body of gas is recondensed sent to, to the installation, to the plants, and pressurized and mixed with the LNG. This recondensed body of gas and the LNG that are stored in the LNG tank later on are sent with the cryogenic pumps through the vaporizers. At the vaporizers, it is converted again to natural gas and distributed. But before the being sent, in the metering station, we adjust the pressure and it's measured, the fiscal metering that is very important to know the, the gas that is coming from, from the plant. Here you can see a picture of an LNG carrier. It's more than 200 meters of, of length. And what about cryogenic piping system? When we are working in LNG terminals, if you have not worked before in this kind of projects, even an experienced pipe engineer needs to take into account different considerations. Okay. Of course, the main fluid in this, this terminal is the LNG, the liquefied natural gas, that the operation temperature to, to be liquefied is minus 160 Celsius to maintain the liquid phase. This means that all the process lines, but also their services like drains or vents in LNG terminals are cryogenic piping operating at this minus 160 Celsius of temperature with a design temperature minus 170 Celsius. It's quite low temperature. The main topics we are going to review is we will start introducing the materials for the insulation and the piping, some concerns related with the pipe routing, the spaces and minimum distances, we will focus in several issues of the stress analysis, critical lines, thermal contraction, transient analysis, sensitive equipment and the offshore structures. Some, all these are particular requirements to this type of projects or plants. Regarding the support design, we will see the, the cryonic insulation with polyurethane foam and also with densified food, densified wood, sorry. We will introduce the standard supports and the special supports and finally, we will talk about the cool down when we, it, let's say, introduce, the first time we introduce the LNG into the piping and we start to, to cool the piping, what is the bowing effect, some specific stress isometrics that could be developed for the cool down and activities to be performed at site before, during and after the cool down.